So in this video, I am trying to explain how we can do a project in our interview. Whenever you any interviews, like either it be particularly to Azure or AWS or any data engineering project, first two more main questions that have been asked is introduce to yourself and the following that question will be explain your project like what all you have done your project now coming to explain about yourself you have to be keep in your mind that try to keep that answer crisp and precise try to talk about the experience you had like what all tools and tech stack you have worked on all the previous companies you have worked on so how many years of experience you have on which skill like you are um, you are having more knowledge you try to talk about those skills and don't try to uh, give information about your hobbies or any other active extract activities in this introduction because this is a main only their uh, technical interview has it's a technical interview and the interviewer is mainly looking for your technical knowledge what is there now once you answer that question the second question the follow-up question will be explain your project briefly to also we'll see that how we can how, how the typical real-time project looks like in azure, azure data engineer but before going that let me uh, try to explain you what is medallion or multi-hop architecture since this is the one which is why widely used in nowadays for Azure data uh, engineering project where we mainly implement this in a data bricks and we try to implement that in our real time uh, project. So we'll try to understand what is this. So once we understand that, then I'll try to give you a brief idea of what real time project looks like. Now you can, you, you might be seeing here, right? Uh, we are having something called as a, a bronze, a silver and gold. So let me tell you that uh, this Medellin architecture, what is, uh, it is coined by Databricks. So uh, Databricks has come up with this uh, architecture. So what they are uh, seeing, like we are having various sources. You might be having uh, from database, you might be having object uh, stores like CSV, you might be having JSON data, Parquet. These are the various objects. You might be having IoT device or mobile. You are getting these various data. Now what uh, Databricks suggest is uh, try to collect all this data and dump that data in a uh, layer called as a bronze layer. Wait, it's a raw ingestion layer where we are just ingesting our data we are not doing any data transformation here we are just trying to ingest our data and convert that data in a delta format since why we are converting in the delta format the delta format in a back end it saves has a packet snappy packet and we have a lot of functionality as it we can apply the acid functionality on top of lake house using the delta lake features so databricks suggests us to convert that into a delta format now once we have that data right now it's very easy for us to work on the data since it will be a single point of entry instead of going for multiple sources we'll be having a data in one form that is delta format and it's very now what we do in this material architecture so we try to increase our quality here we try to increase our quality so what we do so we have our ingestion. Now we are increasing our quality. We are filtering the data. We are cleaning the data. We are removing the unwanted column. Uh, we are we are removing nulls, duplicates, special characters, whatever uh, the data we need to improve that quality, right? We are going to do that. And from then from bronze, we are going to move all the data into a silver layer. We improved our quality. Now, even though we have improved our quality, we might have not applied our aggregations. We have not done joins. We have not come up with facts and dimension tables, which is ultimately required for data analytical steam or uh, uh, we need some aggregated data for machine learning people so that's the reason like to improve still more uh, quality of data we come up with another layer called as a gold layer where we you based on the business level we do aggregations we do joins we come up with data warehouse like fact uh, model like fact and dimension so for these three layers like more from bronze silver and gold it has called as a multi hop since we are hopping from one layer to another layer or it's also called as a medallion architecture so why we use it basically we use it for organized data in our lake house with incrementally improving the quality of data as it flows from one layer to another layer now before moving forward again i would just like to inform you that these a naming convention may change. We may say this bronze layer as a raw layer. We may say this silver layer as an intermediate layer or validation layer. And we may say this gold layer as a enriched layer or process layer. So again, it depends upon project to project. So it changes uh, based on the project requirements and naming convention. So, but we need to understand the brief uh, understanding, like main basic understanding of what is a Medellin architecture. So I hope you might have got a brief idea. Now let's see how we can implement this in our project. Now you're seeing here, 
this is a typical architecture i would like to say for any project and here i'm trying to show you a batch oriented process the batch oriented data is nothing but we are going to fetch the data in a batch wise uh, either it will be a day or a weekly wise data or monthly wise data we are going to fetch it it will, it will be not a real time streaming data so we are this is a typical and uh, if you are using a real time uh, there will be not much dif uh, difference within the architecture almost 80 percent will be same but we will be using re uh, real time streaming uh, things like we'll be using kafka or any other real time uh, streaming uh, tools but now let's see what is the uh, batch oriented process now let me change this color to black so that we have some nice understanding okay now you can see these are the sources these are various sources we are having so we are having either sap we might be having we are getting fetching data from apis or website we are having salesforce we are having sftp we are having on-prem data this might be sftp and the on-prem sql these are the on-prem data or data might come also from the other other uh, cloud storage also like s3 gcp or adl so these are the some six brief uh, the sources i have considered now again in the project it's not like all the sources will be there in one particular project it depends so if you are moving on-prem data to cloud so you might be having only sftp or or on-prem or we are fetching data from website will be having a salesforce or api it again uh, depends upon the project requirement but uh, to have a more detailed understanding i have considered all the sources now what we are doing we have now in these sources what we'll be having we'll be having data in the form of what tabular format will be will be might be having tabular format we are having csv file you might be having json pocket and other files like these are the different files uh, form of files we'll be having so what we are going to do we will use make use of adf using adf what we'll be doing we'll be doing uh, building a pipeline where we are going to fetch that and keep all this data in the landing now what this landing layer the main aim is to come up with the landing layer is we want to have all the data in our cloud so there is here again we won't do any transformation just a basic copy activity from source to sync that will be a landing layer and here will be what we'll be doing we'll be not changing any format if it is a tabular format we'll try to come up with csv or packet so that we can have some integrity of data so what we do here we'll be having a data in like this we'll be having landing and landing under that we'll be having sap as a subfolder under that based on the date like suppose 24 2024 05 05 and under this we'll be having star files okay so this is the uh, this is how we are going to have so uh, we'll be having in the form of that so once we have that data right uh, based on the uh, dates we are going to increment that data so we'll be having all that data in the landing layer to fetch the data we are going to use of self-hosted integration runtime why are we using self-hosted why we are not using azure data integration runtime see any any data that is coming out of azure network then we will go for self-hosted integrated runtime where we are fetching the data from outside the network of azure and moreover like if we are using azure integration runtime we'll be having more control on the configuration if data we are fetching is more to improve the performance we can increase the configuration of self-hosted integration runtime so we have more control over it that's the reason we are going to use self-hosted integration runtime now to bring this all data we are going to use something called has metadata metadata driven pipeline so what are these metadata driven pipe so what we are going to do is we'll i will try to come up with one table called as config tables you can see here is a metadata container where we are going to create one metadata metadata database db where we are going to come up with one uh, table called as a config tables where we are going to add information of all our sources uh, any anything related to login or uh, any port details any authentication using keywords obviously we are we are going to save that everything in keywords and call that name in the config tables and we are going to also uh, feed information on bronze layer silver layer gold layer and if there is any any lookup uh, metadata like thing if you want to put uh, 
on top of uh, any particular column a seed is we are implementing everything we depend that in the config layer so what it does is since we are defining everything in this we can metadata metadata using this metadata we can drive the pipeline so that uh, it will be dynamic in the way and once you move from one environment to another environment so it will be very easy to move also that's the reason we use this metadata driven pipelines so once i hope you might have understood till now so once we have that data in our landing area so next our main work starts see now this is uh till now we have not done any transformation the main thing we have done was bringing the data from on-prem or any other source to cloud in some of the projects like you if your te uh, team is vast and uh, there are more number of people so these all activities are taken by something called as a data entry people so data entry people what they do they do this the, and you might start only from the landing or directly from the landing layer you might start working so you must understand now you, the again uh, the number of pipelines to bring the data depends upon the number of sources if you have since you can see here we have six sources we are creating going to create a six different copy activities with six different pipelines and if if required any child uh, pipelines for that pipelines we are going to associate those child pipelines as well now using link uh, services we are going to link to uh, we are going to create a configuration connections and then uh, using self-hosted integration item which is a uh, acts as a bridge and we bring from source to destination for us now is landing landing layer now again using adf what we are going to do we are going to prepare the next orchestration purpose now ha as i said right uh, before i might have explained you about a medallion architecture in dataworks now we are seeing this medallion architecture now again in bronze layer what now we have a landing layer we have all different source of data now we want to convert that into a delta format here we convert all the form into a delta format again you are going to create a bronze db we are going to create a silver db and gold db inside the data bricks so once we create that and this data uh, we can use the external storage as well that can be uh, that can be stored all your information of metadata and data in the external location that's why i have shown you as a data lake here where we are showing in an external location once we convert all the data in the one format now we have a, a, again see now we have again improved the quality we have improved from a different file system to one file system that is delta now improved now we, again we need to improve more quality of this data since we are directly uh, like converting we are not doing any transformations in the bronze layer so what we do we do more transformations here so that's the reason we use silver layer where we are going to clean the data we are going to remove the null records blank if any blanks we are going to fill that any additional column required we are going to add that based on any bad records are they we are going to completely remove that using bad record removal we are coming up with the uh, any duplicates, everything, whatever the basic cleaning data cleaning activities are then, right? That has been done here and we store that uh, data in the silver DB. Now, once that is done, now based again on the base on the user uh, use case of uh, uh, user requirement, we are going to come up with another layer called as a gold layer as I explained. It's called a curated layer where we are going to do aggregations. We are going to come up with the fact and dimensional tables. So once now this is the ultimate layer where we have enriched data here, complete good data. We are the final good data we are having enriched format in this. Now what we do is now we have a, a data analysis people where they're going to connect to that directly to a Power BI and uh, they can connect directly data bricks gold layer to the power bi and try to build the dashboards and reports or in some projects what they do no they need a something called as a data warehouse also so to do that they come up with another uh, layer called as a data warehouse layer where it can it, it can be synapse it can be snowflake it can be azure sql also where they are going to uh, maintain all that data again this can completely uh replaced by data where also it depends it depends upon project to project so once we have this layer so we are going to create our power bi reports now machine learning people uh, sometimes what uh, what they do is they want 
they don't want any aggregated data they just want clean data to fetch the layer uh, to fetch the data and build the machine learning models that's why they do they just connect directly to silver layer and they fetch the data and they come try to build the models so i hope now you understood why we are creating these three layers so what it gives us it gives us freedom to work around the data and if we have done all these things in one db it would have become clumsier and it would be very difficult for multiple teams to work around and uh, come up with uh, more and more results like for example if machine learning people you did not they did not want any aggregated data so directly they can work, uh, connected to silver layer and fetch the data uh, whereas power bi uh, people they need aggregated data because we are building up reports which are in the aggregated forms so that's the reason they use gold layer now i hope you might have understood why we are using the medallion architecture and you might see another thing here as a called as a log container what is this log container this is another db we are going to create for mainly logging purpose or auditing purpose for auditing purpose we are going to do so we are going to connect this to our adf and then based on the logging like a success of the pipeline failure of pipeline if anything uh, happens in the pipeline we need to log that right so to do that we are going to do that now again these are all things are orchestrated using the adf so using adf we are going to orchestrate now again you have one more thing called the logic app what has the logic app does so if you want to do triggering part or if you want to do any any email notification things then we go for logic apps and then we implement that using inside the adf now this everything is integrated with adf and databricks notebooks so we call the databricks notebooks in our adf pipelines and based on the parameterization uh, uh base parameter and all the parameter and uh, variables based on that we try to make it a dynamic and we come up with the pipeline so i hope you might have understood end to end project how in the real time for batch oriented process it look like now you might be having some confusion like what we need to explain so let me briefly give you an idea what you usually need to do so while explaining your project you try to come up with one or two sources or three sources and say and and come up with uh, saying like you have worked with uh, these sources and if you don't have any idea like any apis or how to fetch from sap you can just say that you uh, the client used to send that data into our landing layer then directly we used to use that landing layer and we we implemented meta medallion architecture for to come up with the final and good data now let me explain you briefly like how you can explain the project now if any any entry or like they ask what's the business use case and what what you have done in your project you, you should explain like this yeah uh, our main aim is to create a centralized data repository where we where client had a data scattered across the various sources so we we were supposed to collect that data from the various sources and come uh, bring those all the sources so what we did collected all the sources and we come up with a layer called as a landing layer where we did not change any any files or system in that as it is we brought that once we had the data in our landing layer then we had implemented a medallion architecture where in the bronze layer we converted all the data into a delta format so once we had converted into a delta format then we we came up with a silver layer where we did all the clear, uh, cleaning and uh, transformations activities like cleaning of data removing of data filling of blanks additional of columns based on the business requirement we had created that so once we had a clean data then we had uh, had come up with a final layer called as a gold layer where we had created dimension and fact tables based on the business aggregations so we had a power bi team which used to make use of this layer and come up with the power bi and dashboard and uh, reporting reporting purpose yeah this is how you have to briefly explain your project try to keep it crisp and uh, don't uh, go more over than this and based on uh, the way you explain the more and more questions will come on databricks and adf this is a brief uh, explanation about the project uh, i hope you like this content so uh, if you have any questions to let us know in the comment section work on uh, we will try to make a video on that yeah thank you for this see you in the next video